right, I'll be in the back after the show later, so just come find me. All right, lost and found. He was, and remains, the best sex I have ever had. We met on Tinder, like all great love stories of 2014. His profile pictures were shirtless and sweaty and muscular. And in some of them, he could have been mistaken for the Russian villain from Rocky IV. He was a big, dumb, blonde, crossfit meathead. Which is not something that usually strikes my fancy, but for some inexplicable reason, crossfit meatheads loved me in 2014. And what does strike my fancy are people who love me. <laughs> Who knows, maybe they were drawn to my soft, untoned body, my laissez-faire attitude towards physical activity, or my ungodly stomach capacity for Tex-Mex. So there we were. He was a competitive power lifter, training for competitions, hitting the gym before and after work, and me, an overworked paper pusher, sitting at a desk 12 hours a day, eating takeout every night, and feeling lucky to make it to the gym once every two weeks. He was an affable enough oaf of a boyfriend, People seemed to like him, and he only occasionally embarrassed me when he opened his mouth. But as a lover, he was slow and tender and attentive and all-consuming and tantalizing, and I have never had a more in-sync partner. We mastered the elusive art of simultaneous orgasms, even the simultaneous orgasm when 69ing. It is not just the tall tale urban legend or lovesick teenage dream of myth and lore. It is real and it was the shit. <laughs> we woke up one morning and had mind-blowing, awesome tandem orgasms and lay together for minutes afterwards. Our sweaty bodies still joined together. Finally, we separated, but continued to cuddle and bask in the sweaty glow of our respectively chiseled and soft bodies. Then, because a gluttonous and unyielding Tex-Mex monster lives inside of me and must be satiated almost daily, we rolled out of bed to get breakfast tacos. This <laughs> is shaping up to be a great Saturday. I pranced around naked, leisurely scooping clothes up off the floor to wear to breakfast, and as I pranced, he rifled through the sheets and blankets. Unhurried at first, but increasingly quicker and more desperate. I tossed him his boxers and socks, thinking that must be what he was trying to find. Have you seen the condom? He asked, panic starting to rise in his voice. All of our basking meant that he was soft by the time he pulled out and hadn't held on to the condom. I thought it must be in the sheets. But together we looked through the sheets and two or three times before stripping the bed completely bare. No condom. We looked behind the bed. We looked under the bed. Nothing. Do you think it's maybe you know, still inside of you? He asked, pointing to my nether regions. I made him turn around so he couldn't watch me stick my middle finger and then my index finger and then my index and middle fingers together in my vagina in search of this buried treasure. <laughs> he did not need to see such an emotionless clinical exploration of myself. <laughs> I dug around up there for a long while, but I couldn't feel any foreign objects. I asked him to try. I lay on the bed and submitted myself to the bumbling gynecological exam of this big, dumb, calloused, weightlifting hands. He didn't feel anything either, so we felt rather confident concluding that the condom was not still inside of me. And just then the dog jumped off the, of his window perch to see what we were up to. Oh God, please no. The dog? Loves rolling in and eating some foul, gnarly, disgusting shit like used tampons, nuva rings, and dead birds. And he had been up and down the bed with us the whole morning. I grabbed him and rushed his mouth open, peering down his throat, and he wriggled away from me and sneezed at the indignity of it. He wasn't acting any differently. Surely we would have heard him if he choked on it. So maybe he went down smoothly and he would poop it out? awkward conversation to ask my dog walker to pay very close attention to his bowel movements in case he shit out a whole condom. <laughs> but I would be willing to have that awkward conversation because I love my dog and I don't want him to end up as a collateral damage of my mind-blowing tandem orgasms. Or maybe he didn't eat it. Maybe he just picked it up and played with it or hid it to eat later. So we embarked on a naked treasure hunt of the apartment. 
crawling on the ground to reach any potential dog-sized hiding places. By this time, we had ventured far from the bedroom, and we were scouring the most unlikely places, including between the living room couch cushions and under racks of clothes in the closet. Finally, the Tex-Mex monster could wait no longer for its sacrificial tacos, and thinking that we had exhausted every nook and cranny of the apartment and my vagina, we resigned ourselves to the fact that the dog ate it, and he would, we would be on poop watch for a few days. We took the dog with us to get the tacos in case he regurgitated his breakfast condom. <laughs> we went to Tacos Tierra Caliente, the truck next to West Alabama White House, Ice House, because their breakfast tacos are only a dollar and their salsas are so hot and hurt so good. And we gorged ourselves on these ridiculously spicy, budget-friendly tacos, and the monster was happy. Dog and I went home, and the boy to his own house. I hopped in the shower and paid extra attention to my cooch. Since there was a chance that some of the contents of the condom oozed out when he went soft, I again went to town fingering myself, scientifically swiping all of spray, uh, stray sperm out of my uterus with my fingers to avoid unwanted impregnation by my rocky villain boyfriend. <laughs> Part of me was just octuple checking that we hadn't missed the condom on the first seven searches. This was not a pleasant task because there were scant traces of the taco tierra caliente sauce on my fingers that burned the shit out of the inside of my vagina. Damn that insatiable monster. But this was the Lord's work. <laughs> Plucking sperm from my vagina. So nevertheless, I persisted. Only when I felt confident that I was sperm free did I turn off the shower and step out to towel off. And that's when I knew where the missing condom was. Because I could smell it. I could smell the latex and I knew where the smell was coming from. It was so deep inside of me that neither of us had been able to, find it, to feel it. I briefly thought about sticking something like tweezers or hanger inside of me to dislodge the rogue latex cum sack. But thankfully I came to my senses. I was going to have to do this the old fashioned way. The way our mothers and grandmothers and great grandmothers before us had. I was going to have to birth this ratchet condom right here on the bathroom floor. It was like my body knew what to do. I had been training for this all of my life through a steady diet of shows like, I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> I am woman, hear me roar, I'm going to do this all by myself. I positioned myself in a deep yoga squat and bore down like I was taking a shit on the floor. <laughs> I pushed from deep within the way I'd seen in the movies. I pushed and breathed, breathed and pushed for minutes. Nothing was happening. I was about to give up. But then I imagined the shame I would feel if I had to get this thing removed by a gynecologist, and I bore down and pushed one more time. And there, between my legs, I saw emerging the tiny little tail of a he happy, healthy, one-ounce baby Trojan condom. <laughs> I pulled it the rest of the way out and threw it away in a trash can where I was sure the dog couldn't eat it. I was proud of myself. Proud of my womanhood. But I couldn't celebrate for too long. I had to get back to work. I turned on the shower and went back to whisking re renegade sperm out of my vagina with my hot sauce fingers. Thank you.